welcome. My name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. And today we have a, another episode of Makeup Mondays, and this one is jam packed with a few requests. So, on my eyes today, the Tom Ford Quad in Noir Fume. So, we're going to talk a little bit about that one. We're also going to take a look at swatches of that in Nick Mirage, and that's for Tammy. And then we are also taking a look at the Sisley Blur Expert Powder. So I actually have a full review of this powder that we're going to be doing today, as well as comparisons with the Coke and Dough Blurring Powder in Blurring Beige, or the Brightening Moisture Powder in Blurring Beige, as well as the Chantecai Perfect Blur Powder. So that's the Hummingbird one that is coming back maybe even this week, I don't really know exactly when, but it is coming back soon in different packaging. So we're going to compare all of those as well. So I have some clips, I've been working on that one for a little while now. And then for cheeks today, you can see I my makeup's not completed. We are actually going to mix our own Meteorites blush. So this is something that I would love Guerlain to do. I would love for them to create a line of blushes using the Meteorites Pearls. And I actually contacted them with this suggestion and a, a few suggestions <laughs> along those lines. So we'll see if they end up creating something like this in the future, but I thought we would use the pearls that I have and create our own today. So we're gonna start off with that. So I just have a little jar here and we're going to mix and match some of the Meteorites pearls that I already have into this and you know, create our own color. So I'm gonna start off with the holiday ones from last holiday. So this is 2019 holiday, it's the Golden Land one. And it has some like reds. So we're gonna take red pearls here also got some coppery shades so let's take one of those so we have two reds one copper and we might as well grab eh, let, let's leave that that one's we'll see if we get another one next I'm going into the meteorites in light and I am taking two of these lighter pink ones and I'm also going to grab two of the lavender and let's get one yellow here and one of the sparkling white. And then I'm gonna take the pearl glow. I would use the pink pearl, but I know a lot of people don't have that one. I feel like Golden Lamb was a lot easier to get. So we're going to just stick with these ones because hopefully some other people might have those, but I hope this kind of like inspires you to play around with it. And we do have quite a few shades in here that are similar to the ones in the light, but what's different is gonna be this shade here. So we're gonna grab two of these. And we're just gonna grab one more of the white ones, which I think is the same as the white from the light. So this is my Meteorites mix. Just going to mix this up. So we'll put the cap on here. And this jar in particular, you know, it's actually left over from when I used to make baby food for my children, but it's just one of those little, uh, the bell jars, I forget what they're called. You know, they have the big ones that were very popular for a while. Everybody was making like smoothies and overnight oats and things in them. This is just a smaller version. All right, so you can see it's been broken up a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see the, the dust, the powder dust in there, but we're going to go ahead and apply this as blush. So I'm gonna bring you in closer so we can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna take the Sonia G Master Face Brush and I'm gonna dab this on the pearls, but I'm getting some of the powder that's on the bottom here as well, so. Let's just see what this looks like on the cheek. So what do you think for a light highlighting blush? And obviously you can customize these and add, you know, more deeper shades and so forth. If you're, you know, you want something a little bit darker, more pigmented. All right, I actually, I like it. I think it's fun. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more here, make it a little bit brighter. All 
All right, so there is my Meteorites Pearl Blush. And I think, you know, this, it's such an, a fantastic opportunity for them to create like your own custom meteorites, your own, you know, different blush shades and so forth. I think they could make a really wonderful line out of these. So hopefully they will pursue this in the future. I was going to put these back in the original containers, but I really like this mix. I think I'm going to keep this as it is and use this more frequently. I really like the color. So let me know what you think about the Meteorites Pearl Blush that I created. I personally really like it. And, you know, it's something I would consider buying some of the deeper shades of Meteorites for to, to create some more things like this. Because I don't know about you guys, but I think it's a lot of fun just to kind of mix and match some of the stuff that you have to create something new. So yeah, I, I really like this. And you can control how luminous it is depending on you know, what you put in there. So I think it is really fun. So I hope that inspires some of you guys to play around with some of the ones that you might already have or whether it's pearls or something else, but you know, create something new with what you have and maybe give it some more life, especially if there are particular shades you don't wear very often. Maybe they're too light or too deep for you or, or something, but I personally, yeah, I really like this. So let's move on to Noir Fumé. So I have this eye look on right now. And you know, when I first got these palettes, these are the ones that came out beginning of 2020, I think. They either came out that January or the December 2019. I don't remember exactly which, but I picked up three of the ones. I think there were five that came out. They were okay to me at first. And then you know, I didn't really enjoy them after a while. Some of them were like a little patchy and so forth. And the shades just don't perform as smoothly as the wet dry formula. And, um, you know, I've been trying these quads again now that I have the Tom Ford eye primer. I have to say that the Tom Ford eye primer really does make a big difference with these particular shades. And they are performing much better with that particular primer than they have with other primers that I've had. I think a lot of it is the fact that it's a very heavy silicone based primer. So it really makes it very smooth, much, you know, much less resistance when applying the eyeshadow. So that has kind of helped. So, um, you know, <laughs> I can, I can get these in play a little bit more. I was going to give them away, but I'm holding on to them. And I have to say that the eye look I created today, I think is a pretty nice look. This is a lighter version of something you can create with this. I do have a video dedicated specifically to this quad where I have additional looks. I mean, you can see how deep it is and how easy it would be to create like a deeper smoky eye, something more glamorous and so forth, but it's still something light enough that you can use like for an everyday, more conservative look as well. So right now I'm going to share the eye look that I created with you here today. And then we are going to take a look at these eyeshadows. Right, we are starting off with the Tom Ford eye primer. Put some of that on and getting it everywhere today. And we're using Tom Ford Noir Fumé. And this is the Sonyuji Classic Crease. I'm going to go into this shade here. So I feel like this eyeshadow palette just screams smoky eye, but we're gonna go in and do something light. So I wiped off the brush and now I'm just kind of blending what is already there. And I wanna soften that a bit. So I'm gonna go into the cream shade with this brush and I'm just gonna kind of put this on the outer portion of the shadow. So not deep into the crease, but the part that is above the crease. So it starts to kind of fade out. Then I'm gonna take the same brush. I'm going into this brown shade on the bottom. So this is the bottom left of the quad. And I'm going to put this on the outer portion here. And I'm going to just kind of blend it over so it's deeper on the outer corner. Okay. 
You can see that blended out really nicely. I have to say that the Tom Ford eye primer really works well for these shadows. So, All right, and then I am taking the Sony G Soft Shader into the cream. And I'm going to first dab this on the inner corner here. And I'm just gonna lightly kind of pat over the stuff closer to the inner corner. So it's just, it gets a little bit softer. All right, so it's not a super light look or anything, but it's a lot lighter than a traditional smoky eye that you can easily create with this palette. And I'm just going to take some of the deepest shade for eyeliner along the upper lash line. So I'm taking the Esim T05 into this deepest shade. I'm just taking the tip of the soft shader here and just kind of softening that a little bit. All right, and this is the I Look Up Close. So overall, after having this palette for, you know, over a year now and using it periodically, I have found that it's okay. You know, I don't dislike it as much as I did before. I don't love it. And when I don't use a primer with it, it it's, it's okay. It definitely needs a primer. And in particular, I do like the Tom Ford eye primer with that. Now, keep in mind the Tom Ford eye primer is going to help smooth out your lids. It's really great for more mature eyelids. If you've got wrinkles, you know, anything like that, it's going to be great for kind of smoothing it out and giving you a nice base. It does not help with longevity of shadows. So just something to note there. Now I don't have an issue with longevity of these shadows personally. And I think the eye primer really does help give it a smoother base and you know, it blends out much more smoothly than it does without a primer or with some of the other primers I've tried. So just something to note, I do think it's an okay palette. So let's take a look at the swatches for this. And then we're also going to take a look at the swatches of Mink Mirage. So here is Noir Fumé. And the only shade that kind of can be a little bit patchy for me is this deeper shade. If I put that all over the lid, it's, I mean, you can even see in the swatch here, it's just these shadows, the creamy shadow, the one that looks more cream is a little bit more powdery. These two here in the middle, these are very like creamy in texture. So they perform really well. I like those two. This one here, it's just a little bit chalky is not the right word, but it is a little bit drier. You know how things with like black pigment and darker pigments can sometimes be a little bit of a drier formulation. I think that's the issue for me with that particular shade. So it works great as a liner. It works great in small areas, but if you're trying to take it and blend that one out, even with the eye primer, I still have some issues with that getting a little patchy. So just something to note there, I think it's just that deepest shade, I think because of the combination of the pigments that I have in there, it just doesn't perform quite as well as the other three. All right, so side by side, Noir Fumé, Make Mirage. So you can see that they still have fairly similar color stories. Obviously the tones are different, but you've got more of that creamy ivory shade and then some deeper brown shades. Now Noir Fumé, these two shades are going to be slightly shimmery. They're more of a satin. They're not like glittery or anything, but they're, yeah, they're, they're more satiny, a little bit of a shimmer to it. Whereas Make Mirage is all matte. So here are the shadows in Make Mirage. And I have to say that I still prefer the Make Mirage over the Noir Fumé because as I mentioned, this deeper brown one in Noir Fumé is a little bit patchy at times, but I feel like this black shade in Make Mirage actually performs better. The two of them don't feel the same if you swatch them with your fingers to me. So this one feels like drier, kind of like, you know, like the, some of those things, like if you have like a black eyeliner that starts to dry out, you know, that type of thing. So it feels kind of like it's more of a dried out product. Whereas this just feels like it's drier on purpose. It's more of like a dry powder. And I just feel like it blends a little bit smoother than this one. The Noir Fumé sh shade, it just, it feels like it was intended to be a little bit creamier and it got dried out. Whereas this feels like it was always intended to be that way. So I don't really have issues too much with patchiness with these. These perform 
much better in my opinion. And well, I wouldn't say much, but they perform better. They are mattes and I do think they perform better with the eye primer as well. But overall, regardless, I think that the Mink Mirage Quad for me blends out a bit better than the Noir Fumé and that's purely because of that deepest shade in each of the quads. Otherwise, they're pretty comparable. So whether you prefer Noir Fumé or Mink Mirage, I think it's gonna be personal preference. You wanna take a look at the finishes. Again, we've got two satins here in the Noir Fumé versus All Mattes in Mink Mirage. And I think for most people, you're probably not going to be blending the deepest shades all over your lid very often. So it probably doesn't matter that this one doesn't blend out quite as smoothly because when you're using in small areas, it's not really something that you would notice so much. Now, I believe Tammy's question was a little bit more about the shimmer and being able to get lighter looks and so forth with these. So these satin shades here in the, the Noir Fumé, they are not very shimmery. They're, I mean, you can see on the eyes that they don't provide like sparkle or anything. It's really more of a soft satin finish. So I do think that would work just fine for a conservative atmosphere and so forth. And you can definitely go with lighter looks with both quads. However, Mink Mirage being lighter overall is going to be a little bit easier to achieve lighter looks than the Noir Fumé. And I think both of them can be built up for smokier eye looks. But again, Noir Fumé is probably going to excel at that more so than Mink Mirage. So it kind of depends what you're looking for, but you can get both palettes to work for either eye look category, in my opinion. All right, so next up we have the Sisley Blur Expert Powder. This is 0.38 ounces or 11 grams. And I believe it retails for $100. I'll have to double check that, but all purchasing information for all of the products mentioned today will be down below in the description box. This has a 36 month shelf life and it is made in Italy. This is a powder. So you've got the Sisley uh, Orchid logo here. You've got a mirror at the on the top of the palette. Oh, I just realized I never pulled off the sticker. I didn't even see the sticker on there. So this is a compact, again, a fingerprint magnet, but you know, I actually like the fact that it's not animal print. I'm not a huge fan of the animal print on all of Sisley's packaging personally. So this is a powder and I didn't pick this up until just recently because I've always been afraid that it's going to be a little bit too deep for me. And I have to say it is a little bit too deep for me, but it's something that I can work with. Now this powder, it's recommended you know, you can use this in many different ways. Some people use it for setting powder, some people use it for finishing powder, but I think the most recommended way to use this is actually underneath your foundation or all on its own. So you can use this, if you don't feel like wearing makeup, just use this to give your skin like a little bit of a tint and some blur. And it does work for that, but if you have coloring like mine, it's too deep for that. So if you have deeper coloring, that would work better. So let me just show you what this powder looks like. And it is firmly pressed in the pan. So it's like a, a baked formula here. And you can see here that it's more of a beige shade with some yellowish tones to it. I wouldn't say it's overly yellow, like some products that I've used, there's definitely beige in there. So there's a little bit of brown in there as well. But overall, it's too deep for, for my complexion to use on its own. And before we go ahead and talk about the, you know, my thoughts and so forth, I just want to swatch a couple more products. So I also compared it with the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. And this feels very similar in the pan to the Sisley. They're both going to be more of that baked formula and they're firmly pressed. The Chantecaille is a little bit more powdery. You can see that it actually just, it's a little peachier and it's gonna be lighter than the Sisley. So side by side, the Sisley is definitely going to be deeper. It's also a little bit more powdery, so it does come up out of the pan a little bit more easily depending on what type of you know item you're using for application. And then by request, I also compared it to the Kogendo Brightening Moisture Powder in Blurring Beige. Now I have to say that this powder is intended to be a setting or finishing powder. It's not really intended for use underneath foundation, but I did try it that way just so you could see it. 
So we're gonna come back, talk about my thoughts on all of these items. But first, let me show you, I have quite a few different application um, comparisons and so forth. So let's, let me show you those clips and then I will give you my thoughts. All right, so I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So we're starting over. I am going to apply the Sisley Blur Expert with the Sonuji Face One to the right side of my face. And I started applying this before, but had to, I, I removed it. So anyway, you can see it's a firmly pressed powder. So you don't pick up a whole lot all at once. You don't need a lot of this powder. So this is one coat and you can see there's definitely some blurring action between having it on versus off. So we'll add a little bit more here. And if I were to build this powder up, let's say use it as a finishing powder, the color would be too deep for me, but since this powder is recommended to be put on underneath foundation, it's not really an issue. So here are two layers of the powder versus nothing. And then we're gonna compare this to the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder. So I have the one, the Hummingbird Compact. It is coming back out. It's got a beautiful kind of like flower power type design. Might actually be called that, I don't remember. You can see that this one picks up product more easily. So I just tap some off. Now I like to use a buffing brush with these powders because it kind of puts them on your skin nicely and it's easier to pick up these firmer pressed products. So this is one layer of the Chantecaille. However, the Sunuji Face One being natural hair, you know, it's, there's a, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more flex and give with the bristles. So if you're looking to get more product more easily, you might want to consider the Chantecaille Buff and Blur Brush, which just seems to pick up the product like a little bit more product with these just because of the actual fiber change in the bristles with this particular type of item, something that's this hard pressed. So this is just, you know, it's a little bit looser. So these are the two sides, the Chantecaille and the Sisley. And you can see that with both of them, the shades are not ideal for my skin tone to wear on top. The Chantecaille, when I layer this up, it's just, it's just a little bit too peachy. And the Sisley is a little bit too deep. But underneath foundation, it looks pretty pretty good. So let's apply that now. We're going to use the Kokendo Moisture Foundation in 012. And that is, you know, it's a really natural looking foundation. So I feel like it's going to kind of highlight how well these powders work fairly easily. It's also not, you know, full coverage, it's light to medium. So I think we can, you know, be able to see a little bit of that through it. I'm going to use the Coyota, uh, it's the F04 brush to apply this. And I'm just going to kind of stipple this on right now. Now, one thing I want to mention about putting on this foundation or a foundation on top of these powders, it doesn't quite feel the same as putting it on top of your skin or on top of your skin with a primer, just because they're, the powder kind of adds like another base layer to it. So there's a little bit more resistance. So, you know, it's just the bristles flow a little differently on your face. So stippling the foundation on actually is a little bit easier to do with it when you have the powder on underneath because it kind of adds, it's not like a tackiness, but it acts like a tackiness to your face when you're adding the foundation on top, even though your skin just feels you know powder dry. So here's the foundation. I still have plenty left, but that's gonna be it for now. And let me know what you guys think. So do you think one side is better than the other? I'd love to get your thoughts. I'm going to apply the Sisley Blur Expert using the Chantecaille Buff and Blur Brush. Now this one is a little bit more, essentially more dense than the Sonia G. So you can see that the fibers, you know, on my face, 
that they don't they don't flex quite as much so it's giving you like a more intense application so i'm just using like small bits and more of a pouncing motion at the moment with a little bit of sweeping so this would be the side with it versus without you can see the level of coverage there and then we're gonna try the kojindo moisture powder brightening moisture powder in blurring beige now i've never used this underneath foundation i always use it on top it has a more powdery texture than either the Sisley or the Chantecaille, but I figured let's go ahead and see how this works underneath as well. So you can see going on, it's definitely lighter. It's a better shade for me in general, but the texture of this powder is more like, well, it's more powdery, whereas both the Sisley and the Chantecaille are a little bit firmer, less powdery, more like a gel powder hybrid. So they adhere a little bit more strongly to the skin. All right, so here's the Sisley versus the Cogendo. You can see right away that the Sisley is going to offer more coverage uh, in this particular case. But again, in my opinion, the Cogendo I can use as like a finishing powder or a setting powder. And the Sisley you can tell it's way too dark for me to use it above foundation. So let's go ahead and try on some foundation. To keep with the test with the Chantecaille, we are going to use the Kokendo Moisture Foundation. This is 012. And I'm using the Coyoto F04 brush in the Fupa series. So that's one layer. All right, so you can see right away with one layer of the foundation that definitely getting more coverage of like my redness and things with the Sisley Blur Expert side compared to the Kokendo. Again, I just want to state one more time that the Kogendo technically is a setting and finishing powder. It's not intended to be used underneath foundation, whereas the Sisley one is recommended underneath foundation. The Chantecaille I haven't actually seen recommended that way, but the powders to me are very similar. So, and I have found that it works very well that way. All right, so here you can see the coverage difference. You can also see the color difference let me push you back a little bit so you can see it a little clearer. All right, so when you look at my face as a whole, you can see that the side with the Sisley powder is deeper. Some of that depth from the powder shade has definitely come through the foundation and it makes it just a tad too dark for my face. It's not bad. It's something that I could work with, but it's, you know, it's definitely a better color match without the Sisley powder underneath. All right, so we are going to use the Sisley Blur Expert. We're gonna use this all over today. I have already tried this with a sponge. I didn't film it. Unfortunately, the color is just too dark for me with a sponge, but it does give you more coverage. We're going to use the Synergy Face One, and this is going to pick up just a little bit of product. I'm just gonna show you the Face One on my right side and then something even denser on the left side. And I used both of these brushes during uh, some of the comparisons. So I just wanna show you how they look. So now we're gonna take the Chantecaille Buff and Blur brush. And you can see the difference right away that the Chantecaille one actually applies more product. You can see how much gets picked up here. So I think it's going to be a personal preference. All right, so if you look at both sides up close, you can see that there's definitely more coverage, more blurring with the Chantecaille Buff and Blur brush. And again, the difference between these two brushes, you can see how much, you know, 
this is a denser brush. You can see that the ferrule here is going to be larger in diameter. You're, you've got more hair here with the Shantikai than you do with the Sunya G. It's just that this fans out to be like the similar size here. So this one's a little bit fluffier than the Shantikai. So if you're looking for more coverage, the Shantikai is going to work better with this particular product than the Sonia G in this case. All right, so here is my skin after applying the Kogano Moisture Foundation. So again, this is the side that uses Sonia G brush versus the Shantikai. And once you have the foundation on, I feel like there's not quite as much of a difference between, you know, which side looks better. I feel like they're pretty even. I would love to know what you think though. Now we're going to set this foundation with the Blur Expert. I'm going to use the Sonia G this time because it's a little fluffier and I don't want, you know, too much product here. So just going in gently here. What do you think? Does it look more blurred? So let's start with the Kogano Brightening Moisture Powder. Now, I don't think it's really a good comparison to compare this product with these. If you're using the Sisley or the Shantikai as a finishing powder, you know, then you can kind of compare it. But for both of those powders, I personally prefer to use them under foundation. I feel like they perform better under foundation when you're applying more of it versus as a setting powder. So I think the Kogano is great for a setting powder or a finishing powder but it doesn't really have much an effect of an effect underneath foundation. So I absolutely love this powder. I use it all the time. Definitely recommend it for setting or finishing, but not for wearing underneath foundation. Now between the Shantikai and the Sisley powder, I don't know if the Shantikai has actually been recommended to use under foundation, but based on Sisley's recommendation to use that product underneath foundation, I, I've actually been wearing this one underneath foundation for, I don't know, basically since it came out. So a very long time. It's been probably almost a year or over a year. I think, I don't remember. Anyway, I've been using it underneath foundation and that's really my preferred method of application with this particular powder. Or I like to, you know, get some lightly on my finger and just kind of tap it under my eyes. You can see it adds a little bit of a blur and brightening effect compared to the other eye here. So that's usually how I like to wear that. Now with the Sisley, it's gonna be a little bit deeper. It also feels like a little bit more of a gel powder hybrid uh, when you swatch it with your finger. It's like a little firmer in the pan, but it feels like there's a little bit more moisture in it. It's not quite so powdery, if that makes sense. So just something to note there. I don't think it gives me the same effect as the Shantikai does under the eye. Again, it's a little bit too deep for me to give any like real brightening. And I feel like both powders perform fairly similarly with the amount of blur that you are getting. Between the two of them, I prefer the Shantikai mostly due to the color. And I also prefer it just because I think it's a little bit easier to get up out of the pan and get enough product on your face faster. So, you know, I showed application with the Shantikai Buff and Blur Brush and with the Sonia G uh, Face One Brush. And I like both methods. I think if you're looking for more blurring, more coverage, you want to go with something denser like the Buff and Blur Brush. For most days, I would probably just use the face one with the Shantikai, but with the Sisley, I, I do prefer the Shantikai brush, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, it's really a personal preference. Now I did try these using a dampened sponge for application. I also tried using a dry sponge or puff and it's just, they're just too deep for me that way. So it does build up a little bit more blur, but it just, I feel like it doesn't look as good when you have that much product on and then you put the foundation on top either. And one of the things I do wanna note is when I use these under foundation, 
because I am so fair, I can still see these colors a little bit through the foundation. Like I'm not seeing that I have an extra product on, but it does change what my foundation shade looks like unless I'm going with something like really full coverage. So just something to note there. So when I have the foundation just on one side without the blurring powder, and then I have the blurring powder and the foundation on, you can see that it's, it's a different shade. It looks deeper overall that way. So just something to note, but I do think I can use either of these technically under foundation, but the Chantecaille shade is a little bit better for me. Either way, both of these shades are not ideal for my skin tone, even under foundation, but I do enjoy using them once in a while because I do think that it gives me a better, more blurred effect. Now, as for using these for setting and finishing powder, the Sisley one, again, as I mentioned, it doesn't feel quite as powdery as the Chantecaille. So I feel like when you put it on as a setting or finishing powder, it just, it doesn't perform quite as well in that capacity. Uh, just because if your skin is already like a little dewy or a little tacky, it kind of adheres a little bit more heavily in certain areas than others. It's a little bit harder to get even light dusting. And I think that's because this formula is just a little bit creamier. So um, that's just something to know. I do think if you have a deeper skin tone than I do, like medium skin and so forth, I think this would actually work very nicely for you know, buffing them for finishing powder to give a blur, but on my skin, it's too deep, so I can't really use it that way. The Chantecaille one, I think, actually performs a little bit better as a setting powder or a finishing powder uh, for me, just because, again, it's a little bit more powdery, so I think it applies a little bit smoothly, more smoothly in that particular capacity, but again, because the color's still a little bit too deep, I, I don't do that, <laughs> so, but I do know a lot of people who do, and I've tried it many ways. I prefer it as setting versus finishing powder personally, uh, if I had to choose between the two of them. But again, my go-to would be underneath foundation for my skin tone. So if you have one versus the other, I think they're similar enough that you don't need both. And I think it's really personal preference, which one you would prefer. For me, personal preference would be the Chantecaille one for all of the reasons that I have mentioned. So but overall, I think the Sisley Blur Expert Powder is a very nice product. I think it does what it says it's going to do. It does offer blur. It has a little bit of a skin tint. I do notice a difference in what you know my total look looks like after I have used it. So I think it definitely performs well, but it did take me a little bit of time to just kind of experiment with it to figure out exactly how I liked to apply it best. And yeah, so I think it's a nice product. For me, it's not a must have. And I know everybody loves the Chantecaille product. Again, for me, it's not a must have either. Um, I don't think you need both. Personally, for me, the reason I don't think that these are must haves is because of the primers that I use. Again, I love the new Dior Forever Skin Veil Primer. It's very moisturizing. It has a really nice blurring effect. It also has a little bit of a tint to it. Let me just show you on my skin here. Just gonna put a little bit on and rub that in. So it doesn't really tint my skin too much. Like when I put it on, I don't see it, but this is something you can wear on its own without foundation as well. So if you're looking for a little bit of a blurring effect, this gives it to me and so does my Surat Perfectionist Primer. So since I really enjoy using those, you know, I don't need to add the powder in addition. So it's kind of like for me, I don't need it, but it depends what you like to do in your routine. I know a lot of people don't use face primers. And in that case, one of these powders might be a very nice option. Now, if you are looking for a type of blurring powder to wear underneath foundation, I think these are probably the two best options on the market because again, you wanna look for something that is more firmly pressed in the pan, more of this baked formula and something that will adhere nicely to your skin. And I think both of these do that very well, whereas you go with something like the Kogan Doe powder that's more powdery, that's gonna kind of like brush away or, or move away as you start to apply your foundation. So you want something that grips to the skin a little bit. So I do think both of these perform very well in that capacity. And I think if you're trying to choose between one or the other, the biggest difference is going to be the tones, the color. And again, the Chantecaille is much more peachy. 
than the Sisley. So I think that's going to be kind of a determining factor. Now, just something to note, I believe they are coming out with new shades in this blurring powder. I don't think they have a lighter shade coming out, but I could be wrong. I haven't seen them, um, but I do believe there is a deeper shade coming out. So just something to note there if you're interested in either of these. You know, size-wise, again, the Sisley is 11 grams made in Italy. The Chantecaille is 8 grams, and it is also made in Italy. So price-wise, I don't remember how much this was. I think you get more per ounce with the Sisley, because I want to say this was like, uh, I want to say it was like something like 78 or something like that. But if I can find a price, I'll let you know. I don't know if I'll be able to find the price on this, but this is like a hundred. So, you know, I, I'm pretty sure price per ounce, you get a little bit more from the Sisley's. So those are all of my thoughts on these powders. And in particular, I have been testing both the Chantecaille and the Sisley side by side for quite a while now. And, you know, also individually also. So if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I've done lots of experimentation with these, so chances are pretty good that I will be able to answer your question. I just didn't film all of the different trials that I have done. And last thing before I go, I just wanted to share, this is one of the new Guerlain Kiss Kiss Bloom lipsticks. This is a special shade. This is 258 My Kiss Glow, and I just wanted to get your opinions on this, but you can see that it is a soft pink. We're going to talk about this in my video on it, but it's, I believe, supposed to be a little bit different than the rest of the shades here. So we'll talk about that in my video, but just wanted to give you a little preview. And I do have two additional shades that I picked up with this also. So uh, that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope I was able to answer everybody's questions. Again, if you have any additional questions, please leave them down below in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I'm at Alexis Jong. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps a lot. And I really appreciate your support. So I hope you all have a great day. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you very soon and stay safe and healthy.